I'm Dr. Harriet Etheridge. I'm based in Johannesburg, South Africa. I've spent a large part of my career working in the fields of organ donation and transplantation. One of the main challenges facing organ donation internationally is that our demand for donor organs far exceeds our supply of them. We simply don't have enough available and this translates into thousands of lives being lost every year. This situation has compelled countries all over the world to start looking at ways that they can increase the number of deceased donor organs available. Many have suggested that moving from an opt-in system, which is what most countries traditionally had, to an opt-out system is a good way to increase donor numbers. Under opt-out systems, every single person living in a country is presumed to be an organ donor and it is presumed that they will willingly have their organs extracted for transplantation when they die, provided the circumstances are correct. Those who do not wish to be donors need to explicitly state this preference, which is usually recorded in an opt-out register or similar. When people first hear about opt-out, there's a tendency to think it's absolutely brilliant. There are millions of people in each country. This would surely translate into millions of additional donors. However, it is not this simple, and changing from opt-out in to opt-out is not nearly this effective. In my paper, I argue that neither an opt-in or opt-out policy is effective for increasing donor numbers when used in isolation. In fact, I go so far as to argue that an opt-out policy, if implemented in a haphazard and rushed fashion, can actually decrease deceased donor numbers. Rather, I suggest that a switch in system from opt-in to opt-out needs to be accompanied by significant investment into managing and trying to overcome the numerous barriers to transplantation that manifest at all levels in our populations, from our politicians and lawmakers, all the way to our patients and our healthcare workers in hospitals. Furthermore, I argue that for many countries, devoting resources to bolstering their current transplant systems would be much more effective than making a switch in legislation. A switch in legislation requires extensive resource and infrastructure investment, and many countries cannot afford this. In my analysis, I particularly focus on developing countries, with special reference to the African continent, as these countries are often excluded from this type of analysis.